Hi, I'm Luke Robitaille. Let's talk about geometric inequalities. So the most fundamental geometric inequality is the triangle inequality. which is in a triangle ABC with side lengths uh, BC is lowercase a, CA is lowercase b, AB is lowercase c, then AB is greater than c. And we're assuming this is an actual triangle. So if it's something like this, where all the vertices are collinear, then that doesn't work. So that, but the, in a real triangle like this, say, that works. Which basically says the shortest distance between two points is a line segment. And this is and symmetric uh, permutations of this also hold. So we also have this. So a plus b is greater than c, b plus c is greater than a, c plus a is greater than b. And now we have another very important inequality, not strictly a geometric inequality, but it's called the trivial inequality. This is the actual name of this inequality. It says, for a real number x, x, an element of the set of real numbers, x squared is greater than or equal to 0 with equality if and only if, so we abbreviate this by if, x equals 0. Not too hard to prove. If x is 0, then we obviously have inequality. We, I mean, we obviously have equality. If x is positive, then x squared is positive. If x is negative, then x squared is positive. So that's why this is true. Uh, the triangle inequality, I guess it, maybe I, I guess I should prove it. So basically, we, what we can do is say, um, and then drop a perpendicular. So then AC is greater than AD, and CB is greater than DB by the Pythagorean theorem. And then the sum of these is AB. Or correctly, we could have a diagram that looks like this, in which case the sum of the lengths is greater than, the sum of these lengths is greater than AB, or it could be, again, equal if it's a right triangle. So yes, that's the triangle inequality. So, and I guess it would be more correct to state it as for any points A, B, and C, A, B is greater than or equal to C with equality if and only if the point C lies on the segment A, B. So both of those I can call the triangle inequality. Now let's actually move on to something a little more interesting. So. There are several inequalities pertaining to just an ar any arbitrary triangle. So let ABC be a triangle. A, B, and C be the side lengths. Let R be the in radius, which is the radius of the inscribed circle tangent to all three sides. Let, uh, let capital R be the circumradius, the circle passing through all three vertices. And let S be the semi-perimeter. Which 
which is some, the perimeter divided by 2. Then we have, the, we have this famous inequality of Euler, which says that the circumradius is at least twice the inradius. And then the classical proof, there are other proofs, but the classical proof is to say this, is to prove this. And then appeal to the trivial inequality to say now that this is greater than or equal to 0, because this is greater than or equal to 0. And then r is positive, since it's an actual length of something. So then this is non-negative. And furthermore, this would give us that equality holds if and only if this is 0, which would mean that the circumcenter is the incenter, which can easily be seen to imply that the triangle ABC is equilateral. And we can verify that we do, in fact, have equality in that case. So uh, I'll take a moment to actually prove this statement that oi squared equals r times r minus 2r. Oh, and in this, we o is the circumcenter, the center of the circumcircle. And i is the incenter, the center of the incircle. So here's an interesting proof I came up with. Um, and there are many other ways to prove it. There's a more standard proof where we notice that this is equivalent to this. And then we prove that ai times id is 2rr because of power of a point, where d is the arc midpoint. By, by the so-called fact 5, this is bd where d is the midpoint of minor arc bc of the circumcircle, or arc bc not containing a of the circumcircle. And then we write this as this, which is what we want to prove, and find, find a pair of similar right triangles, which would look like this, a, i, and tangency point to uh, minor arc midpoint b and major arc midpoint. And this is BD, this is 2R, this is R, and this is AI. And this, these angles are right, and this angle is this angle, which is this. Details left as exercise. But instead, I want to present another, a different proof, something uh, I might. Here's something that I thought of. So um, we, want, we can, so this is equivalent to. Um, to this, no, other way. And now we notice that the 2r term is r minus oi plus r plus oi. So we can rewrite the thing that we want to prove as this. And I write a question mark over the equal sign to say that this is what we want to prove. We can write it as 1 over r equals r over r plus oi plus 1 over r minus oi. Now, let's multiply both sides by r squared. It's equivalent. To get that this is what we want to prove. So this, could, this suggests inversion about the incircle. So um, yes, if O equals I, then, we, then the triangle must be equilateral. And then our, we can, it's easily computable that this is R plus, 
that r equals big R equals two little r, so this is trivial. So let's assume that these are two different points. Um, so draw this line oi to intersect the circumcircle at two points x and y, such that i lies on segment ox. Then ix equals r minus oi, and iy equals uh, r plus oi. So if we invert about the in-circle, we know uh, yeah, somewhere out there. We know that A, B, C, this, this A inverts to the midpoint of this, B inverts to the midpoint of this, and C inverts to the midpoint of this. So the circumcircle of A, B, C will invert to the circle through these, th uh, through these three points. So it's the Circumcir so it, this will actually be the nine-point circle of the contact triangle, which is this. So the radius of this circle, as, since it's the nine-point circle of this triangle, is half the radius. Uh, th its radius is half of the radius of this, the circumcircle of the contact triangle. But that's just r, the in-radius of ABC. So this circle, its radius, is r over 2. So its diameter is little r. Um, now, furthermore, we notice that its circle must, uh, no, its center must lie somewhere on this line. Uh, because Because i is the center of inversion, so the center of this circle and the center of this circle, which is o, the center of this circle and the center of this circle, must be collinear with i. That's, how, that's what happens with inversion. Like by symmetry, over, if we thought of it as a reflection over this line or something. Then like if we reflected over this line, this would stay the same, so this would have to stay the same. So its center lies on that. Now look at the images of x and y. Call them x prime and y prime. Then x, y passes through the center of this circle because it lies on this line. So x, y is a diameter of the nine of the, the circle. So its length is the twice the radius, which is 2 times little r over 2, which is r. Now, um, uh, an easy little bit of angle chasing can show that this triangle is acute. And from there, we see that the, its circumcenter lying, so like, we can see that i lies inside this nine-point circle because the contact triangle is acute. Uh, so the circumcenter of the contact triangle lying inside the nine-point circle by homotopy through its orthocenter is equivalent to the reflection of the orthocenter of the, of the contact triangle over the circumcenter of the contact triangle being inside the circumcircle of the contact triangle which is equivalent to the orthocenter of the contact triangle lying inside the circumcircle, which we know happens since it's acute. So i lies inside this nine-point circle, meaning it lies on segment x prime, y prime. So we can write this as this. Which is exactly this. And we, from these, we get exactly what we wanted. We get this is true, and so we get this. So that proves this. And I'll want to keep this in mind for later. But yes, this proves this famous inequality of Euler. And actually, this may be known as Euler's theorem. 